Welcome everybody to Bible Answers in 10 Minutes or Less. Today the question is, what does the Bible say about abortion? Okay, so jump right in. The short answer to the question is that abortion is murder, and that is because a woman is pregnant with an unborn child. So we want to start off by taking a look at this idea between conception of birth. So here we see a 40 week timeline. This period of time goes from conception until the baby is born. Now there are not too many people that would debate the morality or legality of ending a life after a baby is born. Pretty much everyone would say that that is bad and that is murder. So the debate all comes down to the point of life. When is that? Therefore, we're going to focus on these 40 weeks and see what the Bible has to say about them. Believe it or not, the Bible has a whole bunch to say. Now, the first thing that we want to go over is the idea that God considers conception, the 40 weeks of pregnancy, and then birth to be a single event. And God always calls it that in the Bible. So, uh, point number one is that conception, pregnancy, and birth are one event. Now, we see this over and over again when God uses the term conceived and bare. And he does this 28 times that I counted until I got sick of looking for verses. We see this through Genesis, Exodus, Judges, Samuel, Kings, Chronicles, Isaiah, uh, and the prophet Hosea later on. And God always says that the woman conceived and bare a son, conceived and bare a daughter, conceived and bare a child. And this goes to show us that God considers conception, the pregnancy, and the birth to be one event. Nowhere in the Bible does a woman conceive a fetus and then bears a child later. It's always conception, pregnancy, and birth are one event. Okay, <clears throat> so the next thing that we want to take a look at is what God calls the unborn. And we see several verses where God explains or labels what the unborn is. In Genesis 16, 11, we read, And the angel of the Lord said unto her, Behold, thou art with child, and shalt bear a son. And this is when, um, let's see, it was Hagar was going to have her son Ishmael. Then we read in Genesis 25, 22, and the children struggled together within her. And she said, if it be so, why am I thus? And she went to inquire of the Lord. And this is when Isaac's wife, Rebecca, was pregnant with the twins, Jacob and Esau. Then we see in Judges 13, 5, the story of uh, Samson. Uh, for lo, thou shalt conceive and bear a son, and no razor shall come upon his head, for the child shall be a Nazarite unto God from the womb. And then uh, last but not least, we see in Luke chapter 1 verse 44, for lo, as soon as the voice of thy salutation sounded in mine ears, the babe leaped in my womb for joy. And what this is talking about, this is Elizabeth, Mary's sister. She goes to visit her, and uh, the cousin of Jesus, John the Baptist, Elizabeth was pregnant with John the Baptist when she heard the voice of Mary. The baby inside of her was excited. So as we can see over and over again, a God calls the unborn a child or God calls them children. Okay, so the next thing that we want to look at is the idea that God knew us from uh, inside the womb. Prior to being born, God knew who we were. We read about that in Jeremiah 1.5, before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee. And there are many references to this. I'm not going to go through all the verses just for the sake of time, but you can do your own homework. In Job, Psalms, Isaiah, and Luke, we see this idea several times. Okay, so this tells us point number three, God knew each of us before we were Born. There are seven points, I should tell you. There are seven points when we're talking about the biblical case against abortion. Okay, so the next thing that we want to look at is that not only did God know us when we were in the womb, but he actually had a plan for us. In Jeremiah 1 5, we read, Before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee, and before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee and ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. We see this again 
in the book of Isaiah. I think it's in uh, verse 49. Uh, or I'm sorry, chapter 49, verse 1, we read, Listen, O isles, unto me, and hearken, ye people, from far. The Lord hath called me from the womb, from the bowels of my mother hath he made mention of my name. So here we see point number four. God not only knows us when we're in the womb, but he has a plan for us before we were ever born. Okay, next point we want to get to is the idea of murder and killing. See, in the Bible, we're not allowed to murder, but there are three exceptions to when it is okay to kill. And the Bible shows us that here, uh, there is a time to kill. That is a lyric from a popular song, and it comes from a verse in the Bible in Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verse 3. We see that there are three instances where it is okay to kill, and that is in self-defense, uh, in the case of capital punishment, and if you are a soldier during wartime, and I listed the verses there showing you um, when those are okay, so you can, again, uh, look those up and do your own homework. My point is that even though God says that there are three times when it is okay to kill, never is it a child. Certainly it is not an unborn child. Uh, abortion is not one of those exceptions, so it would be classified as murder. Okay, let us look at the next slide, which is point number five. God forbid uh, killing with those three exceptions, meaning that uh, abortion would be murder. Okay. So <clears throat> let's see, the next thing that we want to look at, let me move my notes here, is that God has uh, a role with the family and then with the individual child. And these are going to be two of the last points we're going to be making here. So the first one is that God has a role with the family. In Genesis chapter 4, verse 1, And Adam knew Eve, his wife, and she conceived and bare Cain, and said, I have gotten a man from the Lord. So Eve correctly discerns that God had a role. It wasn't just Adam and Eve. It was Adam, Eve, and God. So God is part of the family structure, and God is responsible for either giving or holding back children. And he has his reasons for that, and I'm not going to pretend to know what they are in every case. But we see that God has a role in making family. God is concerned with the family and with children. Okay, the next thing that we want to see is that God has a role with uh, individual children. And we want to see how God feels about the individual child. And we see this in the Psalms. In Psalm chapter 127, verse 3, Lo, children are an heritage of the Lord, and the fruit of the womb is his reward. So here we have the idea <clears throat> that God actually owns the children. God says that children are a heritage. That means God owns them, and he lends them to us. And God understands that we are to raise them, and he wants us to do a good job, and he expects to get them back and in good shape. So this is the really the most frightening part of the whole idea. When a person aborts a baby, they're not killing their own baby. It's much worse than that. They are killing one of God's children. So we see, we see point number seven, children are literally the property of God, making abortion the murder of God's children. Now, the last thing that I want to discuss is the closest, the closest example to abortion found in the Bible, and that is child sacrifice by a good nation to false gods. The god Molech was the god that they would most often sacrifice children to, and they would make a bronze statue of Molech, and they would light a fire underneath it and get it heated up red hot, and then they would set the babies in the arms of this red hot image, and the babies would essentially be uh, cooked alive. Now, this is something that the pagan nations did, and it was clearly and obviously forbidden by God. But what happened is the Jews in the nation of Israel, especially after um, uh, Josiah's uh, uh, son, um, I think it was Jehoiakim, the kingdom split into a northern and a southern kingdom. And the northern kingdom just 
went all out for paganism, rejected everything God did, and they had their children pass through the fires onto Molech. And they, they sacrificed their children uh, just like all the pagan nations around them. And the real crazy part is that the southern kingdom of Judah, when things were going really bad and they were under the... Uh, the siege uh, of the Babylonian kingdom before they were taken away captive to, uh, to Babylon, they actually sacrificed their children, not only to pagan gods, but they sacrificed their, their children to the God Jehovah, the one true God of the Bible. Hope, they were in such desperation that they hoped that uh, sacrificing their firstborn children unto God might somehow gain favor with God and uh, grant them a reprieve from the um, from the terrible time they were going through under the siege of the nation of Babylon. So this sounds ridiculous. The people of God sacrificed their children, hoping to gain favor with God. It is equally as ridiculous for a Christian to believe that there is some way that God could condone or accept or in any way be okay with the murder of his own children. So with that, I hope this helped in some way uh, describe the biblical case uh, against abortion. My name is Patrick Hayes. If you have any questions you'd like answered, please email them to me at BibleStudyOnTheFarm at gmail.com, and I will make up an answer and get it off as quickly as possible. Uh, have a good evening. Bye-bye.